Today I'm making mushroom risotto veggie burgers. They're a copycat of Dr. Prager's mushroom risotto veggie burgers, which I buy and love, and today I'm trying to make my own. We're gonna saute these finely chopped onions, celery, mushrooms, zucchini, and peas and carrots. Once they're sauteed, it's gonna get mixed with any short grain rice, like arborio rice or this jade pearl rice that I just happened to have extra that I wanted to use up before it expired. So I'm gonna start with sauteing my veggies and just keep the rice to the side until all the veggies are cooked, then we'll mix everything together. There's mushrooms and garlic going into the onion and celery mixture. Cook this uh, kind of by itself before we add any of the other veggies until that liquid that you see in the mushroom starts to evaporate. When it's almost all evaporated, then we're gonna add in the zucchini first and we'll give that a good stir. And then last, we're gonna add in the peas and carrots after all the fresh veggies are soft. Since these were frozen, they're already cooked. Um, we'll add these last. And you wanna just mix everything together and keep this sauteing until everything gets nice and soft. And now we're gonna season with just salt and pepper and add in about a tablespoon or so of truffle oil. You can also add garlic powder and onion powder, just even though there's garlic and onion in there, just kind of give it a taste, see if you want a little more seasoning. Keep in mind that you're gonna mix the plain rice in there and breadcrumbs, so you don't want it to be too bland, you want it to have just enough seasoning so that it's not uh, doled out by mixing in the rice and breadcrumbs in it. So once everything is cooked, we put our rice in a separate bowl, just kind of give it a little fluff so it's not stuck together. Add in your sauteed vegetable mixture and we're gonna wanna just give this a good stir to get everything nicely incorporated. We want all the veggies evenly distributed throughout the rice. At this point, I'm gonna add the breadcrumbs and based on the texture of everything, it seems like it's gonna stick together and hold together really well. I don't think I'm gonna need to add the arrowroot in there. Arrowroot is just another starch, like a flour substitute that can thicken things or hold things together, but I don't think it's gonna be necessary in here. I'm gonna start with just the breadcrumbs and if I'm able to squeeze these into a patty shape and they hold together, I'm not gonna add the arrowroot. You can always add it if your mixture has a little bit too much liquid, it will absorb some of that liquid and help bind everything together. But looking at how it looks when I'm squeezing it in my hands here, it's holding to its shape pretty well and it looks like it's gonna hold together fine without the arrowroot. So this is all I'm gonna add in here and then I'm just gonna mix this really well and kind of smash it all together and start to shape my burger patties. So I'm pretty excited at how well these are holding together. I'm just putting them here on a sheet of plastic to make sure they don't stick because that rice is pretty sticky. I don't want them to stick together by stacking them on top of each other. I just want to give them their own space and I'm going to keep them in this tray until I'm ready to cook them. Once they're all shaped and formed, you can just fry these up again in the frying pan to kind of crisp the outside edges of it and help everything hold together even better. I'm actually really happy with how these are holding their shape. This is my first attempt at this, so this is definitely a keeper recipe. I'm gonna taste these and see how they compare against the mushroom and risotto burgers that I normally buy that I base the ingredients for these off of, and hopefully they're just as delicious. Now when you're ready to eat these, you can fry them on both sides in a non-stick frying pan. Keep in mind they're more prone to breaking. With this method, um, this first one flipped perfectly for me. The one next to it did fall apart when I was trying to flip it. 
It did get crispy and delicious, and I served it with avocado and cranberry sauce for lunch instead of on a bun since it's already got a bunch of rice in it. Another option is to bake them on a silicone baking sheet or a piece of parchment. That way they're guaranteed not to stick and not to fall apart. They get nice and brown just like this. These were baked at 450 degrees for about 15 minutes and then moved under the broiler for another five minutes or so to get that nice golden brown. I think these do look like the Dr. Prager's burger that's shown in the upper right corner there. They look very similar. Mine are a little bit larger and I think the Dr. Prager's version is more heavily vegetable and less rice, even though there are three kinds of rice in theirs. I copied the ingredients from the package and while mine holds together just as well, it's got a crispier, kind of crunchier outer crust to it, which I actually prefer. The Dr. Prager's is more of a veggie, kind of mushy texture and mine is more of like a crispy rice ball texture, like an arancini, like you could actually fry these in a bowl and it would be just like a arancini risotto ball. So I actually prefer the texture of mine, but the taste and the look overall is very similar. So I would call this a really successful copycat venture. If you guys have tried these burgers before and you know what they taste like, please try my recipe, let me know what you think, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIY tips.